In this video, we're going to be going over the settings part and default settings from inside of Bobcad Cam. Now, the settings part and the settings default can be found by going over to File and then right down here to Settings, or you can use this little shortcut button right next to the Undo button at the top of the screen. We can click right there on Settings. Now, what this is going to bring up is System Settings, Document Settings, and current document settings. So the difference between the document default and the current document is that the current document only affects the window that's currently opened. The document default will affect every new window that you open up. So this is where you're gonna set things like your units, your settings for your coordinate system, as well as any display. So you could change your background color. You could change the color that shows when you've selected an object. You can change the color that shows when you highlight an object. You can change your entity color defaults, your preview color, your solid. So anytime you create a solid, instead of creating an entity colored solid, it'll create a different color like this purple here. We could change our dimensions and text, but only if the button is checked on, which will apply this change to it, as well as our axis lines down the middle of the screen, our UCS display plane color, and our toolpath color. Again, if they have a checkbox next to them, it means they are active if they're checked and they're inactive if they're not checked. And if they're unchecked, then it's gonna show up as the entity color. Now, right down here, we have whether or not we're showing our X and Y axis. So you can uncheck that if you do not wanna see it. Below that, we have show nomen, which is whether or not we're seeing that little guy in the middle of the screen, the red, the green, and the blue arrows right there. That's our nomen. Right here we have our shading and wireframe quality. And if you look at the defaults that's set up on the first install, you'll see it's about a quarter of the way up. If you have a graphics card, feel free to move that up a little bit. I got mine about halfway because I have a graphics card and I do wanna see good results when I open up my models. Now, if you open up a model and it's just really low quality, the best thing to do is to go into the current document because again, we're only gonna do this on this one part. You'd go to your current document to the quality section, you would turn it all the way up. Now that can be very hard on your computer depending on if you have a graphics card or not. So just be careful with it. You don't wanna run it all the way up all the time. Right here we have our solid wireframe line which thickens the exterior lines of our solids. We have our UCS plane display, and this is whether we can see through the plane that shows up when we create a UCS or not. So whether it's opaque or transparent. We have our orthogonal view and our perspective distance set to 100, and I've never changed that at all. And then right here, we have our selection area option. Now, if you have a hard time clicking on objects, that could be a mouse setting. So you could go through your mouse settings inside of Microsoft first, but if you're having a hard time even after going through those settings and you wanna be able to click on things a little bit tighter or kind of open up the grip of your cursor, then you can change the selection area. If you move it to the right, it'll make it so your selection becomes a little bit bigger. I leave it right there at the default and I've never really had any troubles with it, but if you do, this is the area to go look at. Right here, we then have our CAD settings. So it's our CAD tolerance. So what do we draw at as a system default? And then we have our chain select tolerance. So anytime we're chain selecting geometry, if there's a gap or an overhang, in this case, over a thou, then it'll jump that gap and kind of ignore it as if it wasn't there. Your snap increment are the default increments that we use right down here next to your color. It's the increment in which we snap geometry. So by default, it's a 16th of an inch for any distances, a one degree angle, and a scale of 0.25. So it's just gonna default to those values when you open objects that have those. Right here, we then have our text. Now this allows us to pick a default text that we use whenever we open up the text file under Create 2D. We can either use Windows fonts, which is a list of all the true type fonts on your computer, or we can use Bobcad fonts, which are Bobcad, and they're named AFNT1 through 50. The most important thing to know is if you want single line kind of engraving fonts, one through nine on this list will be single line fonts. And then right here, we could set up a default text height, angle, slant, ratio, and your vectorized tolerance. 
right down here we have our point style. So what do our points look like when we draw them? And you have a bunch of choices for different types of points and then kind of the size of the point overall. Now under dimension here, again, we have a text option which lets us pick a default font that we wanna use whenever we're dimensioning. We have our default value. So again, a lot of these objects can be changed when you're inside the specific feature. Like right here, my number of decimals can be changed while I'm doing my dimensioning. So this is again, just the default. If you want four decimal places by default, set this to four right here. All right, here we have our scale factor, whether or not we have extra zeros to make up for if our object is say 0.5 and we need four decimal places, it'll show us 0.5000 with the extra zeros on the end. Right here's our tolerance. So we have a choice of doing none, single, symmetric or custom. And this allows us to define a tolerance of number one and tolerance number two, as well as how many decimal places we want on the end of it. Right here's just our witness lines and our dimension lines, just what size they are as we create them. Right here is arrows, which allows us to choose the left or right arrows if we wanna make them look different, just what type of arrow do we use, the length of each, and then whether the parameters are on the inside, the outside, and where you position everything. Again, all these features can be changed while we're doing our dimensioning. This is just what we want as the default. Now, right over here, we have our cam tab. So we see that the tolerance for two axis, which we cannot change is 0 0.0001 or 1 10 thou. And then below that, we have our three axis, which is set to half a thou. And that one is modifiable while you're going through your features. And then same with lathe. We cannot change lathe, but the default is half a thou. So it's a pretty good place to be. Right here for simulation, we just have some tolerances for when we're using work pieces and fixtures, as well as our default machining orders for milling jobs, probing jobs, turning jobs, mill turn jobs, and wire EDM jobs. So you can choose to go by individual feature, which is gonna sort it the exact way your cam tree is laid out. You can go by individual tool per machine setup. So if you have multiple machine setups or multiple work offsets, it's going to do one setup at a time, as opposed to if you say individual tool, this is gonna go between setups. So I'm gonna leave mine on individual feature. And then when we're done with the defaults, if I've done this for the first time, the best thing to do is say, apply all these settings to my document, and it's gonna apply all the same settings to the current document. You could also make all your settings changes here under current document, because every time you hit apply and change something, you would actually see it change here in the background, and then you could reapply it back to the default. Now for the system tab, this is where we find a lot of the information about where we store things and just some options for our Bobcat experience. So the first thing we're gonna see is the directories. Now this is where we have the data folder saved. It's on my C drive inside a folder called Bobcat Cam Data inside a folder named version 34. For our cam features, we're gonna save them in the features folder, which if you need reference, we actually talked about that in the previous video, as some of the features are things that you could move from one version to another. Right here, we have our choice of creating a backup copy of our file and then the directory that's used during that. Right here, we have autosave. Now, I do strongly recommend turning autosave on. It is going to save every however many minutes you leave it at. So if I come in here and say save every 15 minutes, which is the minimum, you can go ahead and save every 15 minutes. Now, just know when we do the autosave, if you're in the middle of something, it might seem like the software locks up. Just be patient, let it save, and then you'll be able to continue working right after it's done. Right down here, we just have some keyboard and mouse options. So enter equals tab essentially turns your enter button into a tab function, which tab and Bobcat and tab really in Windows advances you from one box to the next. So by checking this button, when you hit enter, instead of creating the geometry like an OK button, it'll treat it like a tab button. So it'll move you to the next box. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on because I do like being able to hit enter and not have my geometry get created. Zoom to cursor, this is one that I really would never turn off. Zoom to cursor means wherever we place our cursor, when we zoom in and out, it's gonna zoom in with our cursor. It's gonna go towards our cursor and zoom into the area that the cursor is sitting. Right down here, we have invert scroll wheel. If the zooming in and out seems 
backwards to you, invert scroll wheel will reverse it. So if you're used to a different system that has the opposite zoom in and zoom out of Bobcad, feel free to turn this on so you don't have to learn a whole new way of zooming in and zooming out. Right here's our 3D mouse. Now, if you have a 3D mouse, really all you have to do is plug it in and then launch Bobcat, and it's pretty much ready to go. In here, you wanna make sure that that's turned on. And then right here, you have a choice of your rotation center point never showing, always showing, or only showing whenever you're doing a motion, whenever you're rotating or panning with your 3D mouse. And then finally, we have this data collection. Now, we are trying to collect the information about what features are used the most often. We are not collecting this in any way that lets us know who you are or what you're doing. It just lets us know what features you're using. So if you use a create 2D feature like a line, it's gonna show up to us that someone used a line. We don't know specifically that it's you. We're just trying to figure out what features we should spend the most time with in the future so that you guys get the best experience with Bobcad. Now, if you uncheck that button, you will not be sending usage statistics, which is not a big deal, but it does help us out, lets us see what everyone's working with. Now for the user interface, we can actually change some settings here. And these used to be found inside the layout settings, but we don't need the layout anymore because it's all in here. So I like to use the office black and I like my selection mask that's currently down here at the bottom. I like it over on the left side of my screen. So I'm gonna add those two in. Now we also have an option for our tree behavior. Now this is an option that lets you double click on features inside of the Bobcad cam tree and either edit them or just collapse and expand them. So you get a choice of what that double click does inside the menu or inside the cam tree. Now over here on our cam tab, we have enable cam tree flyouts, which are little arrows that you'll see throughout the cam tree that allow you to make minor modifications to the cam tree right through there. And you could actually turn this one on and off down at the bottom of the screen. There is this little button right here just next to the snap increment. It looks like a chat box with a little info circle on it. And that'll actually be your cam tree flyouts. Now auto blank new items. This means that whenever you create a tool path, it automatically blanks it out. So you don't have to go blank it out. It all depends on your workflow for me. I like to blank out all my tool paths almost immediately because if I then click on each operation of the path, I can see what each operation is doing. So I don't recommend turning that on. If you're new to the system, you will definitely want to see your tool paths right away. But if you're more advanced and you're getting into it and you don't need to see the tool path all the time, auto blank new items is a great option that just automatically blanks them. Now the look and feel, and we'll see this more through the cam tree as we go through the future videos here, but we have either the classic cam tree, which is gonna be the standard look and feel that you've always been used to inside of Bobcad. We also have an extended version of the cam tree. So what this does is you have a status location. So this could either be to the left of the cam tree or the right of the cam tree. And what it does is it shows you what features are able to be blanked and post yes node and whether they're blanked out or post yes node. Very easy way to tell. And you get a choice of either doing checkboxes, which is just gonna be a checkbox, or icons for that. So I'm gonna leave icons on for now. And then right here, when we post our code, we could change what font is showing when we post the code. So you can go ahead and pick whatever font you'd like and go on from there. Right here, we have customized ribbons. So if there's any part of these ribbons up top, like the Create 2D, Create 3D, any of those, you can actually add and subtract things from them. Like in this case, I don't need the Robo DK or the APT ribbons up at the top. So I can actually click on Robo DK and I can say, get rid of that one. And I'll click on the APT and get rid of that one as well. And this is more standard. This is what you should have in your system. I just added those in because I was messing with them. Now, what we can do is if we expand something like Create 2D, I could go down to Utilities of that, and inside the button group on the Utilities tab is all of these features here. Now, let's go to the Home tab because we can really see what's going on. So if we look at the Modify section here and we look at the button groups, we could see the different options. So the first one is Entity Modify, and that's using a large button. 
If we go to the button group, which is these two kind of grouped together, we have the choice of modify by color or modify to the current color, and you can actually group them together. So if you had something like extract edges and you wanted that to show up on your create 2D tab, you can actually go to the tab you want under create 2D and then go to the button group that you'd want to add and actually come in and say, I want to go ahead and add, let's do extract edges to that. And it's going to put it under silhouette. So if I was to go to my create 2D tab, I'll just hit OK on here. You'll see the color change from the setting I just did. You'll see the selection mask over here move to the left. And if I go to create 2D, I now have extract edges on my create 2D tab. So I can get rid of that now by just going back into my settings, go into my ribbon. I'll expand my 2D button group and then I'll just get rid of extract edges. But if you wanted that on either the utilities tab or a different tab, you could always move any of these settings. They can be doubled up. You can have them there. As you can see, we have extract edges here as well as here. But some people are used to having extract edges in the utilities tab from our older versions of the Bobcad. So they wanna be able to put them back there. And then finally, you have customized shortcuts. Now, as you go through the system, there's a lot of shortcuts that are already built in, like the letter F on your keyboard is a fit all function. If you have a certain feature you like to use, like in my case, I like to use ISO one, which is a lot of times the standard view for SOLIDWORKS models, but it is not our default ISO view. Our default ISO view is this ISO two, and you'll notice that already has a current key set. So if I go over here to ISO one, I can click down and add new shortcut and I could just say control nine and currently it is unassigned. Now, if I try and go to control seven, we'll see that that calls up ISO two. So we wanna go control nine and then I'll just say assign. And then that way, anytime I wanna go to ISO one, I just have to hit control and the number nine on my keyboard and it'll automatically go there. And you can create a shortcut for just about any feature inside the software. So once again, when we're all done, I'll hit OK. And again, for the shortcuts, you can see here's Control-7, which turns us into our ISO-2 view. And if I do a Control-9 now, it goes the opposite way and shows us our ISO-1 view. And that concludes the video on the settings part and default from inside of Bobcad Cam.